So some students, instead of using the Faber Acoustic Signal X, Signal Scope X app on the iPhone or the free NIOSH app, uh, have been looking at the Decibel X Pro app. It's kind of got some cool features, but I wanted to take a look and see how accurate it is uh, as a sound, limiter, sound level meter app, especially when you try to calibrate it. So I've got my external microphone connected with a cable to my iPhone, and I'm going to start the Decibel X app. Um, it's got some cool features. Uh, down the bottom is a, a digital readout of the sound pressure level along with an analog scale, kind of a meter that kind of shows where the levels are. On the top half, it's got some cool graphs. Uh, so in this case, it's got an FFT analyzer. Uh, it's got a octave band spectrum. It's got a spectrogram, which has frequency on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis, and color being the amplitude. It's got a sound level meter, like a dose meter, just giving you a readout of the sound pressure level as a function of time, not frequency content, just what are the sound pressure levels to get a history, time history of the sound pressure levels. And then it's got a, an oscilloscope that just measures the time signal. It also has this neat feature that up in the upper left-hand corner, it gives you a, num or a name or a, 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 a uh, a typical environment where the levels that you're listening to would correspond to, like inside a car, loud singing, um, you know, motorcycle, just give you an idea of what the types of levels are that you would encounter. So if I'm going to calibrate it, I'm in the settings are in the lower right hand corner, and I'll scroll up and I will check the calibration. And usually when this app comes on by default, it's got a zero setting. This app, you have to actually have an external calibrator. And what you do is you simply move the slider to adjust plus or minus until you get the level that you think you're supposed to have. Uh, you can't type in the sensitivity. Um, you have to do it manually with this external calibrator. So I'm going to take the external calibrator and I will plug the calibrator onto my microphone. And I've got my calibrator set at 94, so I'll turn the 94 on. And this should be reading 94, but it's reading 95.7, 95.8. So I'm going to have to subtract off, use the slider or the adjustments here, and I will adjust it until I get 94, as close to 94.0, 94.1 as I can. So it looks like minus 1.7 or minus 1.8 is where I have to be, minus 1.8. Minus 1.7, somewhere in the neighborhood will give me 94 plus or minus 0.1 decibels, and I've told you that really doesn't matter. So that'll get me pretty close to where I want to be. All right, so let's get out of settings, go back to the dB meter, and now the frequency spectrum is kind of cool because it shows me a 1,000 hertz signal, and I'm reading 94.1 dB, which is what it should be. Now I just want to check and see what's going on, make sure this is a you know how good this app is. I'm going to change the setting on my calibrator to be 114 decibels instead of 94. And now, look at what I'm reading. I'm only reading 111. It should be 114. I'm reading 111.1. So this app is not consistent across the entire range of sound pressure levels that I might want to use. If I calibrate it at 94, I'm going to be quite a bit off, more than three decibels off at a higher level. So if I calibrate it, Let's turn the calibrator back on again. If I go to calibrate it at 111, so this should be 114. So let's bump that up to 114. So now I've got to add a bunch. And I'll get it up to 114. And say, oh, good. I'm set at 114, so loud pressure should be fine. I should be okay. And now we'll go back and read the setting. Get our settings and go back and read it. I've got a nice, clean good, accurate data for 114 decibels, but if I change the calibrator to 94, now I'm reading 96.9, so I'm too high. So this app is cool. It's got lots of really nice features to look at, but it is not accurate across the entire range of sound pressure levels that we might want to use. So I would be very concerned about using this app in the field, trying to make measurements if we wanted reliability because I'm not convinced that it will have the, an accurate number at the entire range of values that you might possibly want to use.